voiceover is everywhere, and you hear it every day from radio. Number one for New Country 96.3 Hawkeye in the morning. To TV. My name is Lady Whistledown. You do not know me, but I know you. To movies. My name is Optimus Prime. Autobots, roll out. To animation. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. And so much more. Welcome to episode 13. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at the world of voiceover, including movies, TV, animation, and more. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my tribute episode featuring the legendary voice actress, June Ferre. June was born June Lucille Forer on September 18, 1917, in Springfield, Massachusetts, to mother Ida Robinson, a woman of French-Canadian and Native American descent, and to father Maurice Forer, who was a man of Russian descent. June had the good fortune of having a speech teacher who also had a radio program in the Springfield area, which allowed June to get first-hand, real-world experience doing voices for audiences over the radio. But did you know that June was only 12 years old when she first started in the voiceover industry? And it was at this young age that she first started doing old lady voices. After getting her start in Springfield, it wasn't but a couple years or so before June's family decided to move to California. June was a very talented actress who dabbled in both on-camera acting as well as voice acting. But she was particularly talented in the areas of voice characterizations, dialects, and accents. Just like Dawes Butler, one of her later co-stars, June was a voice magician and worked steadily in radio from the 1930s into the 1950s. In the 1950s, June's star in animation not only began to rise, but soared when Walt Disney sought her out for an upcoming project called Cinderella. He hired her to voice Lucifer the Cat in the animated feature film, which released in 1950. The Disney organization continued to use June many times over, well into the 21st century. Warner Brothers also hired June to replace B. Benaderet and do all of its Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies cartoons. June did many incidental characters for Warner Brothers, but her most famous voice has been that of Granny in the Tweety and Sylvester animations. My favorite children's park. This park to be closed in 80 days. Unpaid debt. Excuse me, kids. I need time to think about this. Unfortunately, since Mel Blanc's contract called for exclusive voice credits on these cartoons, June never received the credit for all of the voices that she did. Some of the memorable characters that June voiced are the squaw from Walt Disney's 1953 animated feature film, Peter Pan. Another beloved character that June voiced was Grammy Gummy from Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears. Sometimes I get so tired of kicking these things. Oh, Sonny, I think it's fun. Well, I'd rather be a princess like you with dozens of servants to do my work. Well, you're not. You're a gummy bear. And gummy bears pick gummy berries. So pick. I don't know about you, but one of my favorite shows as a kid growing up was DuckTales, and June played both Magic of Dispel and Ma Beagle on that show. Here's a clip of Magic of Dispel. I wasn't able to find one of Ma Beagle. That spell won't work on me, Magica. I've lived my whole life in your shadow, but I am my own master now and free to pursue my own evil interests. Poppycock, there is only room in this world for one magic of the spell. Thank goodness. Black as night, trick of light, it's time you did retire. She also voiced Rocky the Flying Squirrel from the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. And now... Hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. <laughs> See? Nothing up my sleeve. Presto! <laughs> Wrong hat. Now here's something we hope you'll really like. And now it's time to meet Mr. Peabody. <laughs> now this one has to be one of my absolute favorite voices that June has ever done. It was Grandmother Fa from Disney's animated feature film Mulan and Mulan 2. Here's a clip from Mulan 1. Of all days to be late, I should have prayed to the ancestors for luck. How lucky can they be? They're dead. Besides, I've got all the luck we'll need. 
This is your chance to prove yourself. June also appeared on numerous holiday specials, such as The Little Drummer Boy, where she voiced the drummer boy's mother. Happy birthday, Aaron. You must run, my son. Escape, but run! And one of my all-time favorite holiday specials is Frosty the Snowman, where she voiced the teacher, Karen, and other children who play with Frosty back in the 1969 animated feature. <laughs> children, back to your seats. The snow can wait. Now, now. I've hired Professor Hinkle, the magician, to entertain at today's class Christmas party. So pay attention. <laughs> We're building a snowman, Karen. You make the head. The head is the most difficult part. Ask anyone. What'll we call him? Yeah, shall we call him Harold? Uh, Bruce? Nah. What the fuck, Robert? Oh, no. Oh, Neil! How about Frosty? Frosty? Yeah! Frosty it is! Frosty the Snowman! Yay! 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 <laughs> Frosty the Snowman, what a happy jolly soul! With a corn cup pipe and a button nose and two eyes made out of coal. Now this last character is one of my absolutely most beloved and sweetest characters of all. It's so hard sometimes to believe that June has been around in our lives for so long in so many wonderful projects, but she voiced Cindy Lou Who from the 1966 animated show How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I enjoyed today's look back at June Foray and the wonderful voices and characters that she voiced through her extensive career. These are just a handful of the ones she's done that were memorable to me and fairly memorable in her career. But, you know, I just really hope you guys enjoyed this look back at June Foray's life and career. You know, sadly, June Foray died on July 26, 2017 in Los Angeles, California at the age of 99. She was just under two months away from turning 100 years old. With her passing, I look back at the new... My tribute episodes are done to commemorate and honor those who have gone before us. I do these episodes so that their memories may live on forever in the joy they continue to bring us even after they are gone. Hey everyone, and thanks so much for listening to today's episode of Who Did That Voice? If you enjoyed today's episode, please check us out online on all social media platforms at Who Did That Voice and on YouTube at Who Did That Voice 24. Also, remember to check out our website, whodidthatvoice.org. Again, that's www.whodidthatvoice.org. Thank you to all my listeners out there. I just wanted to say, if you want to partner with Who Did That Voice, just telling your friends and family about us is the best way to share the show with others. And or leaving us a review on Apple Podcast or wherever you get your podcast from. The third and final way is by joining our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Who Did That Voice. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice.